To start, let's explore a familiar routine with the Riemann zeta function, often referred to as a walk across the critical line. We'll begin by setting the real part of the zeta argument as to 0.5, marked in the top left of the chart. The imaginary part is around 21, indicating a zero. The plot displays the partial sums up to a specified number of iterations, in. The initial range, which we'll refer to as the run-up, highlights the chaotic progression and is depicted continuously. Let's briefly switch it off and set up the iterations. Instead of truncating the function, we set a reference count and a range around it. It's a practical formatting choice and holds no mathematical significance. Having set the stage, let's progress to explore the critical line. Without resorting to analytic continuation, it's important to note that the original zeta function inherently lacks zeros as traditionally understood. However, as we observe the central point of the partial sums and its continuous journey across the origin, we can discern the presence of what might be termed as the function's intrinsic or native zeros. Zooming in a bit. Understanding the deep connection between zeros and the critical line doesn't demand computation of the central point, but it proves valuable for visualization purposes. Determining the center lacks a conventional approach. While traditional continuation could be used, we'll apply the inexpensive technique of triangulation. We have the option to hide the original terms and sums altogether. This method relies on the growth factor of a spiral, shown in the small chart on the right. It's calculated for both the partial sums within the harmonious range and the zeta terms. With these growth factors, and particularly for the partial sums, a unified rotation referred to as gamma, we can accurately draw the spirals. Now that we've observed the zeta function's chaotic behavior, let's introduce a method to bring clarity. We'll do this by using the center as a tool for aligning the partial sums around the origin. In this instance, the run-up is omitted. While the centered plot aids visualization, it's crucial to note that the centering holds no additional significance. Every intrinsic zero represents a manifestation of the zeta function's fundamental exponential and rotational characteristics assessed through a self-referential and self-localizing approach. Now let's take a closer look at what this means. Initially, make sure the zeta terms are visible. Next, activate the line illustrating the self-referential alignment. Proceed to zoom in for a closer examination of the alignment. Ensure the alignment stays centered in the viewport and zoom in a bit further. As we've already explored the manual centering process, let's examine how this helps in interpreting the alignment. While exploring across the critical line, the alignment characteristic of the native zeros is vigorously affected by the chaotic behavior of the zeta function within the complex plane. Remarkably, when manually centering the partial sums via triangulation, as noted, attenuating the chaotic movement, the alignment remains tethered to the critical line. The deviation in this case is typically minor and is quantified by the number next to the self-reference button. Having observed this dynamic behavior, together these two perturbative influences provide deeper insight in the context out of which the native zeros emerge. While this method isn't specifically designed for zero finding, it encompasses all the information about their nature, systematically connecting them to each other and to the critical line. Through dynamic truncation rooted in the critical line, 
This invariant principle across all zeros results in a numerical invariance of the zeta modulus, projecting the unit circle. Let's draw the unit circle as a reference. Note that the truncation refers to the precise number of iterations, not to the visualization. Therefore, even as through self-localization the native zeros are linked with the origin, they are systematically identified on the unit circle. This is referred to as the zeta orbital invariance. In contrast to analytic continuation, the native, or indeed, orbital zeros retain complete information about their nature and origin. This is vividly illustrated by a gradual crossing of the critical line. Each instance where the center crosses the origin, the dynamic truncation for that orbital zero precisely aligns with the unit circle. When the partial sums are manually centered, the truncation for the entire critical line aligns precisely with the unit circle. This underscores an invariance deeply embedded in the core properties of the zeta function, establishing an inseparable connection between the zeros and the critical line.